So good afternoon everybody, welcome along to this Macro 4 Columbus Ed Web User Interface WebEx. So as I said, welcome along to the Columbus Ed Web User Interface WebEx. In terms of the agenda, we have uh, introductions in a moment. We'll give you a brief scene setting for Columbus Ed and then run through the Columbus Ed Web version 5 headline features. And then the main feature uh, of, of, of this whole webinar is to introduce the new web interface and we'll introduce that before my colleague gives a demonstration of that. And afterwards, we'll take a look at what needs to be done to configure the web interface. And then we'll let you know the steps to upgrade to version 5.4 of Columbus Z, followed by a Q&A session. So as mentioned earlier, please make sure you mute your line using the star six on your phone keypad, because uh, that helps us. Uh, however, please feel free to ask questions throughout the session using the Q&A option or text chat within your WebEx controls to ask any questions. Uh, so my name is Sam Dix, I'm a Client Service Consultant here at Macro4. And I'm Phil Oldfield, I'm also a Client Services Consultant at Macro4, offering technical account management for our mainframe products. Great, thanks Phil. So, Columbus said, what is it? Well, Columbus said accepts reports from the JED spool, distributes these to printers, and can also move data off the mainframe in file format or via integration with other Macro4 Columbus software. Plain text and AFP are both catered for, as are a variety of our output formats. And the current interface is based on 3270 panels, which are familiar to all mainframe users. So what's new in Columbus Ed version 5? Well, the new features, uh, first of all, is the status feedback integration with Columbus OM. So reports that are spooled um, from JET spool into Macro 4 Columbus OM software via Columbus Z uh, provide feedback at a page-by-page -page level. And these details are displayed on the mainframe job in Columbus Z, documenting the number of pages printed, errors or failures, and completion of printing via Columbus OM itself. AFP to PCL support for 2D barcodes has also been added. So any 2D barcode printing you've got um, within your AFP format reports is supported when printing to PCL printers. And then a new intuitive web user interface has been developed. Let's take a look at that a bit further. Before my colleague provides the uh, Columbus Ed web user interface demonstration, I'd like to point out a feature that the web interface has over the traditional 3270 interface. When logging into the web interface, if you have the correct access, you're able to see all of your Columbus Ed instances in a single interface. This is true as long as they're visible on your network, even when they're located in different LPARs, or even on a different physical system. So without further ado, let me hand over to my colleague Phil um, to give the demonstration of the web user interface. Okay, thanks Sam. Thanks for that introduction there. Right, we're now going to look at the, uh, the new <coughs> Columbus Z web user interface. So as Sam uh, alluded to earlier, uh, the web interface has a visibility of all your active Columbus Z instances uh, that are on your network. Um, so what we need to do first is select <coughs> select one of excuse me select one of these to log into. So I'll do that there, and then simply type in my uh, user ID and password. And this is being uh, uh, authenticated with RACF, uh, although, uh, as you know, uh, Columbus said uh, integrates with um, other external security managers. Okay, so so first up here, this is the uh, the, the, the sort of first screen you'll see, and this uh, gives vis visibility of the Columbus uh, Z instances that are known to the web interface. So as you can see here, you have um, uh, instances that are uh, both active and inactive, uh, and these are um, shown here by uh, a green tick for the active instances and a red uh, <coughs> sign for um, inactive. Okay. So on the left-hand side here, we have the uh, button here for um, to, that displays the instances, as I've just described. Uh, next up, we have printers. Now, this will give you a visibility of all printers that are connected to connected to active instances or defined, should I say, to active instances of Columbus Z uh, across your network. The jobs will show you the uh, jobs residing on the JET spool for a specific uh, or pre-specified um, Columbus said instance, and we'll have a look at those two in, in further detail shortly. Okay, so running a, along the top of the uh, list here of instances are the col column headings, 
And these are um, these sort of the format of these is common uh, across the the whole web interface here. Um, I'll, I shall show you uh, um, in a little more detail what I mean here. So, so the, the, uh, first off, they're all sortable. So, um, for example, the name we can uh, we can sort there. Um, there are also um, 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 you can filter on them, and depending on the uh, the data within the columns, then uh, they will have different filter options. So, for example, there that's text. And uh, on the port number, uh, we have uh, just numeric, so you, you're given a greater option of, of, of filter options there. OK, with these column headings, uh, or columns, I should say, uh, you're able to hide a column by uh, simply sort of removing it from the, um, the selection criteria. And you can also um, shift columns around, um, as you can see here. I'll shift the uh, description uh, to the leftmost side of the screen. And if I hit OK, you'll see that's reflected then in the web interface. Okay, so uh, we've selected my particular Columbus Z instance here, and uh, we're supplied with a, a variety of options that we can uh, do on this uh, this instance here. So, for example, we can have a look at the audit log, and let's do that now. So, this is the same data that you'd find in the 3270 interface, but um, displayed here in in the WUI. Um, one of the features here is that we're able to switch on the green stripes, which will uh, be familiar to those of you who uh, have been working in mainframes for a certain amount of time. Um, this is uh, sort of reminiscent of the old sort of print that we used to get uh, back from the printers. Okay, let's head back to instances here and have a look at another thing. So uh, let's have a look at the subsets. So the subsets are really what drive Columbus said, as we all know, uh, and these are made up of various uh, job attributes uh, from, from the JES uh, spool jobs there. Uh, and uh, printers use these to um, determine which jobs they're, they're going to select for printing. OK. All right. So um, uh, also, uh, back to instances then. So um, just to show you a quick example of some filtering. Um, just I'm able to filter all my instances here on a particular um, host here. Uh, in this case, it's Protoss. Right, OK, let's have a look at some jobs. So what I'm looking at now is uh, jobs on the JES spool that are um, accessible by my, my particular instance of Columbus Z. In this case, it's the instance called PJO54Z. You can switch to other active instances of Columbus Z uh, via the switch button here. Um, so. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, a couple of instances of Columbus Z running. Uh, and uh, the different instances may or may not be pointing to a different JES ball, so that would provide you with a, a different selection of jobs. But we'll stick with what we've got for the moment. OK, so let's just uh, have a look at some, some jobs here on the held queue uh, that I set up earlier. So I'm just going to filter here uh, now uh, on some, some of these jobs. Uh, and let's let's have a look at one of them in particular. So to view the actual data within the job uh, or the report itself, we simply double click, and that provides us then with the the output displayed on screen there. And we can scoot through the different uh, pages here using the buttons, navigation buttons along the top. As with the audit log, we're able to show the green and white stripes, uh, and this sort of clarifies um, um, things on the on the page. We're also able to add um, line numbers. Column, uh, column numbers, and we can zoom in and out as well, just to increase the uh, the the, uh, the size of the uh, report on the screen, depending on your screen size, of course. There's a search feature as well. So let's see if I oops, if I type in uh, that, then we can see that the um, the search has has highlighted um, the text in the uh, in the report here uh, in red, and so that's uh, that's worked there. Another feature that we have on this screen as well is the ability to switch to hex, uh, view uh, the data in hex, which is extremely useful if you're uh, more of a sort of technical person and you need to, uh, you need to re um, review the, um, the hex data in your report. OK, let's head back to the jobs list then. Uh, another feature that we have in the WUI is the ability to look at all the, um, the job uh, property attributes. And these are clearly grouped uh, on the left-hand side here, as you can see. Now, we have the ability to amend or alter some of those attributes. 
Um, and the uh, the main players, or, or, the, or the sort of more useful ones, are, are able to be edited from within the GUI. So that's things like class and disposition. Uh, other options are um, are readable, um, but these are you can see in the grey boxes. These ones aren't able to be changed at this moment in time. But the main players are, so it's, it's still sort of very usable. Okay, let's head back to the jobs list again. Okay, so we've got other options that we're able to do here. We're able to purge from the uh, the, the Jez queue, but um, you know, if we wanted to remove the uh, the, the job altogether, we're able to hold it. But uh, all these are in the hold queue anyway. We're also able to print, and we can do this here to um, uh, move this to the, uh, the the output queue. And if we do this, the queue has been updated. And if we go over to the output queue. and refresh it, you see that our job uh, appears there and it's waiting. So I just want to head back to the held queue just for a second here uh, to show you another feature. So say, say for example I have this report here uh, and I want to um, uh, modify it and, and produce a new report from that. Well, we're able to do that with the print modify uh, functionality. So for example I, I could have a large report but I want to uh, strip down. So say I want to start on page 10 just for five pages of this particular report. Well, I'll just do this through this um, this pop-up here. Uh, of course, I need to select a printer to be able to route that uh, that print to. So let's do that there. And then if I simply hit OK, then the uh, the output will be routed um, in our uh, print request queue and will be picked up by uh, that particular printer there uh, going forwards. Okay, so we've had a look at uh, at the jobs. Let's now have a look at the the printers. Okay, so, so as I mentioned earlier, this is a list of all the printers that are defined to any active Columbus Z instance on our network. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few here. There's uh, printers with different, uh, a different status. Uh, so some of these are stopped. Uh, some of these are in uh, idle status, waiting for print. And others are, are in error status. Um, it might be useful at this point to, um, to filter on, on your printers. So for example, if you wanted to look at just the printers on one particular instance, we can do that there. And uh, you may even want to filter on status just to see which uh, available printers are available. OK, so going a bit further then, we can look at the uh, properties of a particular printer. Uh, and all of the different uh, feature options are grouped together in, in feature types here. So this is quite sort of straightforward. Uh, you'll note that at the moment these are only read-only, so <clears throat> all of these options are, uh, are not available to be edited, but we hope in the near future to add uh, functionality to set printers up from within the WUI. Okay, so just heading back to printers for a second then. Um, as you'd expect, you have all the uh, usual options, so you're able to uh, stop your printers and uh, you're able to start your printers, uh, you know, to send uh, print uh, reports from the JESBOL um, out to print. And that's about it. So uh, are there any, any questions at this stage before I hand back to Sam? Thanks, Phil, for, for showing us that. Uh, there's one that has just popped up on the text chat here. Can I use the web user interface with just a single Columbus Z instance? Thanks, Stuart, for that question. Bill, do you want to answer that? Yes, certainly. Um, yeah, you, uh, that, that's exactly what you can do. You don't, we, we have talked about uh, sort of multiple instances within a, a network, but yes, it is very... It's, um, works equally well with just a single instance of, of Columbus said. And the benefits, of course, of this are that you're, you're viewing everything um, it, through a browser, and it's a native browser with no additional plugins. So you could use this on a, a tablet or, or mobile device to, to manage your, 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 your print infrastructure on the go. Great. Thank you for that, Phil. And I, I enjoyed the demo. I, I particularly find you make use of the um, hex um, display um, myself on there. So I, I think that's a great feature to use. Okay, well, let, let, moving on, let's have a look at the um, Columbus Z web user interface configuration. Um, and the, the web user interface is hosted in an Apache Tomcat server. And you configure each Columbus Z instance and add a new communication server um, using the comserve statement with the port number that the Tomcat server points to. And you configure the, um, the web server and add each Columbus Z instance IP address or host name and port numbers as required. And as you can see, you can add multiple, point the web server at multiple instances itself. 
what are the next steps? Uh, well, Columbus said version 5.4 is uh, going to enter early availability status in Q4 of this year, if not sooner. And we're looking for customers to test this on their own non-production instances. Please, please let us know if there's anything you, you, you know, if that's something you're interested in. And the base upgrade is included within your existing support and maintenance package, which is great news because there's no further licenses to pay for that. And lastly, in order to upgrade, upgrade, please arrange to speak with your technical account manager. Okay, at uh, this stage, do, um, we, we've got to the end of the demonstration itself and the, the notes we've got there. Do, do does anybody have any further questions? Please, uh, please unmute your phone if you want to at this stage or um, using star six or use the chat and Q&A session. Okay, there's a question here which I think you can answer, uh, Phil, that's, that's dropped in. Uh, just type in, okay, so which version of Tomcat is needed? Okay, yeah, that's a, a, a reasonable question. Yeah, uh, t well, testing at Macro 4 was carried out using Tomcat version 7, uh, but uh, any later version should be suitable, and um, I suppose it's worth pointing out that Tomcat does have a prereq of uh, Java 1.6. Great, thanks, Phil. And and the follow-up question on that from the same person there was, where does Tomcat need to be installed? Can you answer that? Yes, certainly. So um, so you can run Tomcat on on the mainframe Windows or or, or any of the supported Tomcat platforms, uh, as long as the mainframe and Tomcat hosts can communicate. Great, thanks, Phil. Uh, so there's no. Let me just refresh the list. There, there's no further um, questions coming on the online chat. Anybody on the phones uh, want to ask a question at all? No, okay. Well, thank you again for attending this Macro 4 Columbus Ed web user interface demonstration, and uh, we'll be in contact with some uh, further information. Many thanks.